Good morning. It's, I am Pastor Rebecca Ordahl, and I'm privileged to welcome you here on this second Sunday of Easter to worship at Holy Love Lutheran in Aurora. It's a privilege to be together in this virtual way as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Last Easter Sunday was joyous, and this Easter joy continues. Welcome. you to join with me as we offer this thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit, gracious God, and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let Susan his our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he see at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the ever, life everla everlasting. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the fourth chapter, verses 32 to 35. 
Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and one no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common communion with great power. The apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and the great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands or houses, sold them and brought their proceeds of what they sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each and every, each as every any had needed. Word of God, Word of Life. Our Gospel reading on this second Sunday of Easter is from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator, and from our Lord and our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. I come to you this bright second Sunday of Easter morning, no matter if the sun is bold and bright or not, the good news of Jesus' resurrection is like laser light for us. I come to you as a near neighbor here in Aurora, where my husband and I now live, Easter Sunday was especially bright for us. We became members of one of your sister congregations in the ELCA, St. Paul Lutheran at Grant 
and 17th in Denver. What a morning, Easter morning, to say yes to membership. I mean, there was a brass choir, a choral quartet, magnificent pipe organ music. The morning was indeed bright with the proclamation of Jesus' resurrection. With bright news and promise across the body of the Christian faith, we sing when the moments of brightness and hope, and hope shine so brightly, so boldly. But we know that in the seasons of our lives, as in the seasons of the church from Advent through Christmas and Lent and Easter and Pentecost, the ebb and flow of brightness and joy mingle so deeply with the challenge of lived experience. The depth of Christian hope is ours always, but is, it is not always laser light bright. With a total, total solar eclipse before North America on April 8th, this preacher couldn't help but draw some parallels. Such an occasion of lightness and darkness, of light dangerous to the naked eye, is perfectly in line with the Easter joy the church proclaims. Some detail about that April 8th total eclipse. Monday, April 8th, total solar eclipse will cross North America, passing over Mexico, the United States, and Canada. The total solar eclipse will begin over the South Pacific Ocean, weather permitting the first location in continental North America that will experience totality is Mexico's Pacific Coast at around 11.07 a.m. their time. And now if you want to think about neighbors who live along the path, you can do that. The path of the eclipse continues from Mexico entering the United States in Texas, traveling through Oklahoma and Arkansas and Missouri and Illinois and Kentucky and Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Small parts of Tennessee and Michigan will also experience this total solar eclipse. The, the eclipse will enter Canada in southern Ontario and continue through Quebec, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Cape Breton. The eclipse will exit the continental North America on the Atlantic coast of Newfoundland, Canada at about 5.16 p.m. their time. On April 8th, North America will experience its second total solar eclipse in seven years. Maybe you observed that event seven years ago. Wes, my husband and I, were in Casper, Wyoming on that August 2017 date. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience, eerie and awesome. The moon glides over the surface of our view of the sun, casting a shadow over a swath of the earth below. Along this path, the world turns dark as night. What preacher could resist aligning today's gospel text in the view, in the context of this eclipse? Who wouldn't be tempted to compare the longing Thomas expresses today when he has missed Jesus' first appearance in the flesh on the day of resurrection? For Thomas, while his peers are abuzz with, we have seen the Lord, proclamation, he awaits. Perhaps not patiently, perhaps not expectantly, perhaps our Thomas of today's text awaits this news in the way that you and I might experience it in this setting we're in, either virtually or in person, in our own closed room, be it sanctuary, or elsewhere. For Wes and I and anyone who has been present as we were in 2017 to a total solar eclipse, animals react. Bees stop buzzing, birds stop whistling, crickets begin chirping, some pets express confusion, even plants are affected, I'm told. 
Scientists found in that 2017 event that plants had diminished rates of photosynthesis and water loss, similar to, though not as extreme, as what happens to plants at night. At night, at dark, on occasions of the dark night of the soul, when hope seems lost. Thomas, of today's text, perhaps, perhaps aches to be removed from the time warp that has been his since Resurrection Day. For eight days, his closest friends have been appealing for his belief, perhaps. It is as Jesus told us it would be, they insist. He died, he's alive. This indeed is truth. Yet Thomas remains in his own closed room of question. And let's be frank, don't we all spend time there? Some more than others. Faith is proclaimed, but is it for us? Is it for Thomas? Is it for me? Here enters the most particular and specific miracle of all. The living Christ comes one on one. The living Christ comes to Thomas. What Thomas needs is what everyone else has already experienced. It's what Thomas wants to be able to proclaim as well, and he does, I have seen the Lord. Recall throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus comes one to one with those who wait. Think of the passages, the calling of Philip and Nathaniel as disciples. Think of the passages Nicodemus at night, or the Samaritan woman at the well or the centurion and his dying son, or the woman caught in adultery, or Martha when Lazarus has died. Moments like these are our own moments, are they not? And Jesus is present one on one with us as well. From the gospel, call stories like Philip and Nathaniel's. You and I are being called right now, right here. Nicodemus in the dark of night. You and I, do we know sleepless nights filled with questions that we just can't shake? The Samaritan woman at the well. You and I, outcast by a group, or more importantly, perhaps in our privilege, needing to be recognizing those who lack that we are called out to make a difference for good in the life of others? Or like the centurion and his dying son, perilous times you and I are in occasionally of dying and death, when those dear to us know the assault of illness and death. The woman caught in, a, in adultery, grace upon grace, shown undeservedly and impartially, whether held by systems of sin which we choose to pursue, or whether held by systems of sin that stalk us. Or lastly, the passage, Martha, when Lazarus dies, unresolved anger when help comes too late or not at all. For all of these individuals in scripture, and for all of us individuals in this particular room, the risen Lord comes. To the left out Thomas, gospel words and physical body come. Wounds and scars proclaim that death is defeated, words 
now are our own. Words now are on Thomas's lips. I have seen the Lord. Who can hold it in? All that is wrong, whether it be wartime loss, now ours in Gaza and Ukraine, all that is wrong in our personal experience or in our communal lives, all that is eclipsed out of that dead, lifeless, cold zone, like that lifeless time warp feeling of a total eclipse of the sun, into that comes Easter, comes the resurrected Christ. Death, where is your sting? Death has been swallowed up in victory, St. Paul proclaims in 1 Corinthians 15, and the song is ours to sing. Past the eclipse, with the buzzing bees and the chirping birds, we with Thomas and all of creation, join the song. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight with gracious words drawn Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people, for all creation, according to their needs. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Gracious God, your church cries out and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit that our faith is renewed and that we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, for a world where all are fed and are safe. Gracious God, this day we especially pray for the people of Ukraine. We especially pray for the people of Gaza. We pray for our own leaders as we seek to change and be people of mercy and grace in a warring world. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians and other staff, administrators, volunteers, those who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship in this full and wonderful season. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. 
All of these things we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. Thank you for being part of Holy Love's worshiping community. I ask that in this time, we respond to God with a thankful heart. As you give, we are able to continue our ministries, including this recorded service. You can give online via our PayPal link on our website. You can give via the QR code seen on the screen, or you can send a check into the church. However you choose to financially give, we really appreciate it. It helps us continue spreading the mission and gospel of Christ. Join me in prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church here on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was over, he took the cup. Again he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved of God, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This is Christ's table for all to partake. This is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. by letting go, giving up what had seemed sure. Take 
making wrist and pressing on. Though the way feels less secure, pilgrimage both right and odd, trusting all our life to God. Faith endures by holding on, keeping memory's roots alive, so that hope may bear its fruit. Promised night our souls will thrive, not through merit we possess, but by God's great faithfulness. Faith matures by reaching out, stretching minds, enlarging hearts, sharing struggles, living prayers, binding up the broken parts, till we find the common place, ripe with witness to God's grace. As I thought about the sermon today, I thought of the conclusion, the celeb celebratory word that Psalm 148 proclaims regarding the joy of all creation in praise of God. Psalm 148, praise the Lord, praise the Lord from he the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his host, praise him sun and moon, praise him all you shining stars, praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Receive the benediction. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. May God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>